The Treaty of Versailles was a pivotal document in world history. Signed on June 28, 1919, it marked the official end of World War I, a conflict that had ravaged Europe and beyond for over four years. The treaty aimed to bring lasting peace to Europe and to hold Germany accountable for its role in starting the war. It imposed severe reparations and territorial losses on Germany. The signing took place in the opulent Hall of Mirrors at the Palace of Versailles near Paris, France. This location was chosen for its symbolic significance and grandeur. The treaty not only targeted Germany, but also reshaped the geopolitical landscape of Europe. It led to the creation of new countries and significant border changes, affecting millions of people. The Treaty of Versailles was a product of the Paris Peace Conference, a monumental gathering that lasted six months and involved diplomats from over 30 countries. The most influential figures at the conference were the leaders of the United States, Britain and France, collectively known as the Big Three. They were President Woodrow Wilson, Prime Minister David Lloyd George and Premier Georges Clemenceau. These leaders dominated the decision-making process, often sidelining smaller nations. Their differing visions for the post-war world led to intense negotiations and compromises. One of the key outcomes of the treaty was the establishment of the League of Nations, an international organization aimed at maintaining peace and preventing future conflicts. However, the harsh economic terms imposed on Germany contributed to severe economic hardship and political instability, which would later be factors in the rise of Adolf Hitler and the onset of World War II. The treaty was met with mixed reactions. While some saw it as a necessary step towards peace, Others criticised it for being too harsh on Germany and for sowing the seeds of future conflicts. Despite its controversies, the Treaty of Versailles remains a significant milestone in modern history, shaping the political and social landscape of Europe for decades to come. The Big Three were Woodrow Wilson from the United States, David Lloyd George from Britain and Georges Clemenceau from France. Each leader had different goals for the treaty. Their visions for the post-war world were shaped by their unique national interests and personal beliefs. Wilson wanted to make the world safe for democracy and proposed the 14 points, including the League of Nations. His vision was idealistic, aiming for a world where nations could resolve their differences peacefully. He aimed to be fair to Germany, believing that harsh treatment would only lead to future conflicts. Wilson's approach was rooted in his desire to create a lasting peace Lloyd George wanted to punish Germany, but not too harshly to avoid future problems. He was caught between the desire for retribution and the need for economic stability in Europe. Clemenceau wanted severe punishment for Germany to ensure it could never attack France again. His stance was influenced by the immense suffering France had endured during the war. France had suffered greatly during the war and Clemenceau wanted Germany to pay for the damage. He believed that only by crippling Germany could France feel secure from future threats. The differing goals of the Big Three reflected the complex and often conflicting interests that shaped the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles had many key provisions affecting land, military and money. Germany had to give up significant territory to France, Poland and other countries, losing all its overseas colonies. The treaty limited Germany's military to a small army without tanks, airplanes or submarines. Germany also had to pay large reparations for war damages, which strained its economy. Germany lost about 13% of its land due to the Treaty of Versailles. Alsace-Lorraine was returned to France and eastern territories were given to Poland. Many Germans in these areas were unhappy about becoming part of other countries. The Saar region was put under international control and Danzig became a free city. Germany's overseas colonies were taken away and given to other countries. The Treaty of Versailles imposed strict military restrictions on Germany. The German army was limited to 100,000 men and they were not allowed tanks, military aircraft or submarines. The Rhineland was demilitarized to protect France from future attacks. These restrictions weakened Germany's military power and were a source of humiliation for many Germans. Article 231, the War Guilt Clause, held Germany responsible for starting World War I. As a result, Germany had to pay large reparations set at 132 billion gold marks. 
These reparations caused significant economic problems for Germany and were seen as unfair by many Germans. The issue of reparations continued for years, leading to further tensions between Germany and other countries. The Treaty of Versailles had an immediate impact on Germany and Europe. Germans were shocked by the harsh terms and felt betrayed by their leaders. The economy was in bad shape, with food shortages and high unemployment. The treaty also reshaped Europe, creating new countries like Poland, Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. The balance of power shifted with France becoming more powerful and the United States stepping back from European affairs. The Treaty of Versailles had long-term effects, many of which contributed to World War II. The harsh terms angered many Germans, helping Adolf Hitler rise to power by promising to undo the treaty. The new countries created by the treaty faced internal conflicts due to diverse ethnic groups. The League of Nations, created to maintain peace, was weakened by the absence of the United States and failed to prevent future wars. The Treaty of Versailles remains a significant historical document. Signed in 1919, it marked the end of World War I and aimed to establish lasting peace. It aimed to bring peace but is often seen as a cause of World War II. The treaty imposed heavy reparations and territorial losses on Germany, which many believe sowed the seeds of resentment and economic hardship. Historians debate whether the treaty was too harsh or not harsh enough on Germany. Some argue that the severe terms crippled Germany's economy and fueled nationalist sentiments, while others believe that a harsher treaty might have prevented future conflicts. The treaty highlights the challenges of making peace after a major war, balancing punishment and forgiveness. The negotiators faced the difficult task of satisfying the demands of the victorious Allied powers while attempting to create a stable and peaceful Europe. It serves as a lesson in history influencing how countries approached peace after World War II by focusing on rebuilding rather than punishment. The Marshall Plan, for example, aimed to rebuild war-torn Europe and prevent the rise of extremism by fostering economic stability and cooperation. The legacy of the Treaty of Versailles continues to be a topic of study and debate, reminding us of the complexities involved in crafting peace agreements that endure